The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM Thursday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have quite a weekly jobless claim, lowest number since 1969. We'll pull that up in a moment. But right now, we're looking at the markets in negative territory as pretty much right where we were at that 830 initial jobless claims number. Uh, Tomorrow looks to be the number that the market is waiting for, for CPI, wage data, inflation data. We zoom in on the action. There's your 8.30 volatility. You could say that the market traded slightly lower on that news to 46.77, but you're talking about only a few S&P points right now. You're negative 15 points on the session, down about a third of a percent in the S&P is trading at 46.83. All things considered, though, we back things up on a 15-minute basis. You had a high yesterday pre-market at about 47.12. That high was correlating to the news coming out with Pfizer and BioNTech saying their booster looked to neutralize the Omicron variant. Uh, pretty tame day in the market yesterday. You look at where we were, you trade down to a low of 46.70 almost, you make it to a high overnight of just above 4,700. Right now, we're negative 15 points on the session. You back things up a good 20 days, though. There's your acceleration from where we were on Thanksgiving down to a low of 4,492. We've basically gotten it all back as we come into a pretty volatile week ahead. We have the CPI data out tomorrow. We have a Federal Reserve meeting I believe we're talking about Wednesday and Thursday. It could be Tuesday and Wednesday, actually, 14th and 15th. I'll pull it up for the exact dates. Nonetheless, Federal Reserve meeting next week. Always the potential. They accelerate things a little bit faster than the market is anticipating. That will hinge, I'm sure, on actually what comes out on the CPI data tomorrow. But right now, we got markets in negative territory, giving back some of the gains we've had over the last few days. NASDAQ 100, negative by about 58 points. Pretty negligible on this chart we're looking at. I mean, you're talking about 800 points off of the lows that we had on two days you back it up whether it was the day of let me get that right what day is that yeah we're talking about friday all the way into monday's action as well uh nasdaq 100 right now down a 30 percent the dow is off a 30 percent as well russell off six tenths percent russell particularly volatile and the russell been the slowest to get it all back right now in the middle of this consolidation area the russell you're still talking about more than 200 points off, off of the highs Bitcoin this morning, back under 50,000 at 49,445. You got crude off about 71 pennies. Crude's had, crude has had quite a bounce recently, though. You back it up to December 2nd. We're still, excuse me, we're still about $10 off of that low we had in crude. Uh, gold contract right now, negative by $8, chopping around at 1777. Gold's been actually pretty tame if you look at the action where we have the market selling off. There's your action in terms of the action on the Friday following Thanksgiving. Since then, just pretty tame action. You're talking about a trading range in gold of about $20, give or take, chopping around the 1770, 1780 area in that gold contract. We jump over to notes and bonds. Right now, you're looking at a slight tick up in price. There's your 15-minute chart. You trade down to a low intraday yesterday of 129.31. Right now, we're at 130.13, and we jump over to the VIX. With slight negative action in the markets, you have a barely elevated VIX from the close yesterday. You're sitting at about 2054 and the volatility index as this market continues to fade upward right now, just negative by 13 points. All right, let's jump over to that initial jobless claims number. Quite a number. We're breaking ref records left and right. Initial jobless claims, 184,000. Unadjusted claims increase. We'll get into that in a moment. And uh, holidays may be throwing this in. That's kind of what the, the the hot take is on the quick take. Um, there's holidays every year, though, and you don't get a record. Back to 1969, applications dropped to 184,000. Market was looking for about 220,000. There it is. Economists looking for 220. What do we got? We got some volume. There we go. Uh, on an unadjusted basis, initial claims climbed by 64,000. Rising prices, coronavirus, they get into continuing claims. Here we go. Four-week moving average. 
218, still quite a number on a four-week moving average, lowest since March of last year. Continuing claims for the state benefits rose to almost 2 million in the week November 27th, up 38,000 from the prior period. Most states reported increases in adjusted claims last week, led by California, Texas, and New York. So that number hits this morning, uh, kind of the appetizer to tomorrow's main event, which is the CPI, a lot more meaningful number in the context of what's going on in the context of a Federal Reserve meeting coming tomorrow. And with that, we're going to jump to uh, another story of inflation. This story out here on the Bloomberg, uh, at Bloomberg, inflation near 40-year high shocks American spooks Washington. So just some cool statistics in here to get into what we're looking at, what we're looking at for CPI, what we're looking at for a forecast. Inflation has stayed elevated for longer than policymakers expected. I've pulled up this chart before. They've used it in a couple articles, but it is interesting. CPI, year over year, in the red here. The blue is in the future, talking about forecast. Now, the number that they have up here right now is the number for tomorrow, 6.8%. That's the number. The already hot inflation is forecast to climb even further when November data comes out on Friday to 6.8%. That'd be the highest rate since Reagan was president in the early 80s uh, and in the lifetime of most Americans. I was born in the 1980s under, the, uh, under Reagan, born in 1980. So I guess I could say that I saw that number, but I uh, saw it as an infant and uh, rightfully so a number, you know, we've never dealt with this type of thing for most people, folks, uh, under the age of 40, you really never experienced it unless you lived through that and you had to be at some point um, of age to recognize it, you know, in terms of whether you're in your 20s in the labor force or older. Now, the interesting one here to look at is the forecast. So they're looking for 6.8% tomorrow and then they go quarter by quarter. Okay, so March of next year, Economists are looking for 5.6% year over year. Now, think about it, though. This is still quite a staggering number. Okay, you're going to be dealing with some comps. We're very familiar with dealing with comps because of the pandemic. In terms of that's coming in at March of 2022. Let me try and find March 2022 here. Okay, so that is actually a lower number comp-wise. Yeah, you were only at about 2.6% in 2021. Man, how things have accelerated since March of this year. Uh, you, you forward to... The next one, which is June, still looking for a 4% year-over-year rise in June. Now, that's where numbers were rocking. We had a 5.4% number in 2020. The market's forecasting 4% in 2022 for that same year-over-year -year period. But from things there, things really trail off. By September, you're looking for 3.2%. By December, 2.6, and when you get into 2023, you could that call that a normalized 2.5% year-over-year CPI number. Now, those are the forecasts, okay? This article, I read it this morning. It's a great article. It is a long article. We're going to talk about some of the charts on this. We don't have enough time to get to it all this segment, but they're important charts uh, because they talk about how wrong economists have actually been coming into this. Uh, a year ago, economists were forecasting 2% inflation for 2021. Folks, I just showed you that the number they're forecasting for tomorrow is 6.8%. So be careful of putting all your eggs in the basket of the forecast going forward to 2022 and 2023. Yes, it's possible that things really pull back, that the world normalizes. Uh, I think it was JP Morgan yesterday that said 2022 is going to be the year that we finally move past the pandemic that uh, they called for an S&P, I think, of 50-50, something like that. If that happens, you're probably going to see those inflationary tendencies subside to some degree. But man, how much of a miss is that? 2% inflation for 2021, and we're coming into December for a November print of 6.8%. Um, put some context in these blue estimations for forecasts going to the future. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back with our man, Kevin Hanks. We'll talk a little bit about inflation further in the show as well. We'll be right back in three minutes. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P is negative by 12 right now. All the markets slightly in the red. Quite an initial jobless claims number out at 830. We got the main event for the week tomorrow with CPI data. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, noon Eastern time, the TD Ameritrade Network, fast market. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. You're talking about defined risk. You're talking about the options market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you, how about this? I got two big numbers for you today. Today's jobless claims was a 52-year low in terms of jobless claims at 184,000. 52 years. Last time we had a number this low in terms of first-time filers for unemployment insurance. And then the other number, $182.85. That's where Apple hits the $3 trillion mark in terms of market cap. So... Two pretty important numbers today. Besides that, well, really, we're just waiting for tomorrow's CPI. We've got a softer open here in the market. Not crazy soft, but still, you know, as a trader who thinks the market is going to go up, a, a soft down market, much like we had yesterday, is probably the ideal way to trade because some longs get out. You're able to get in and trade the opening here. If it doesn't hold, people will coming back into cover like they did yesterday. So this is a pretty bullish setup here for the overall market going into uh, the 930 open here, Tommy. Yeah, it is remarkable. Apple, man. Um it doesn't seem that long ago, Kevin, when the race was going on, I forget whether it was 2018, I think, 2019, it was not that long ago to become the $1 trillion company, right? You had Apple, Google, Microsoft, uh, maybe Amazon was in the mix as well. And Apple just pushing $3 trillion. Man, I just got a five-day chart, Kevin, up on a 15-minute basis on the Thinkorswim platform, and I got a price of 157 back to last week. So you're up, what, $18 almost in Apple, and you're only about 7 to $8 away from that number. So definitely achievable. Uh, the number this morning, pretty, pretty decent number. You could see some seasonalities always. I, I was reading some hot takes already on that number, and I said to myself, Season there's seasonalities every year, though. And just like you said, we're back to 1969, man. So a staggering number for sure. 
All ahead of, of course, CPI data tomorrow. Uh, it seems like I'm reading two to three articles a day right now, Kevin, talking about inflation, expectations. Uh, I was just talking about a, a Bloomberg article, just kind of commenting on the forecast going forward. Maybe by 2023, we in the early part, we're looking for CPI somewhere around 2.5%. But it's interesting, Kevin, because the same article talked about that this year, maybe we'd see 2.5%. And the estimate tomorrow, Kevin, something like 6.8% maybe we're going to see on that number. Pretty staggering how hard it is for some of these analysts to peg these numbers as we go forward uh, with some volatility, to say the least, man, with, with how up in the air kind of where we look to the inflation number and where we go from there. As a trader, and, and you know, I'm just going to pull it up real quick, Kevin, because it was interesting, man, in terms of these estimations of what Bloomberg had here. And when they come into, this is economist forecast, March of 2022, Kevin, they have us down to 5.6. By June, they're at 4%. By September, they're at 32 and as you come into December, 2.6. Uh, where do you line up? A little personal bias on, on how fast that, because to me, that seems pretty quick, man, that we get like a reversal to 2.6% in the next 12 months, especially in context of how big they missed it this year, you know? Yeah, L well, Tommy, let's go not only forward, but let's go backward, right? Jerome Powell's been trying to get levels of inflation and growth over 2% consistently for 10 years. And he hasn't been able to do it. Now he's got them because of the pandemic, because of the whipsaw economy that, that, that we had right now during the pandemic. And now as we you know, seem to transition out or lesser levels of the pandemic, his biggest fear, and you just you know, walked him through his nightmare, which is him. You got to think like Jerome Powell, like a flamethrower, right? And he wants to weaken the flames but they don't want to put them out right so it's a very careful uh needle that he's trying to thread of of tempering some of the growth but not exhaust not you know knocking out the growth and so this fall this this coming down in inflation is very careful that he wants to keep it high but not as high as it is right now tommy it's quite a balancing act, man, and it's so cool how, um, and in theory, you know, it, it does make sense that outside of the crazy exacerbated levels of something like 6.8% that we might see tomorrow, that it doesn't seem like it's the end of the world if you overshoot that 2% number occasionally, if that's the number that's yeah. kind of the median number that you're reverberating, and that's kind of what they changed their their policy attempt to at least. Um, but boy, they, like you said, they, they we have quite a forecast over the next year, and uh, J.P. Morgan, I referenced it to you yesterday. They were out yesterday saying 2022 might be the year that we finally move past, you know, the pandemic and the fears and the volatility. If that's the case, maybe we see those prices return. But always in the back of my head, man, I say, ah, they, they were a little bit off this year, man. And so we'll see where we go next year. As traders, you got to keep those possibilities, folks, in terms of at least that things might not go Um and I would say as rosy, because like you're saying, that's that's kind of an ideal situation, the forecast right now, Kevin, because if that's the way it goes, Chairman Powell's all set, man. We're back to 2.5% by the end of next year. We're all set, uh, but we'll see where we go. We get a little indication tomorrow. We still got some earnings companies coming out uh, this week, Kevin. We get some movers for sure. What are we talking about on the program coming up at 12 o'clock today? Yeah, well, we covered Lululemon yesterday, so today we'll cover Chewy, the online uh, pet food uh, seller. And then we'll look at, in the, in the first block, that's like, like Folio will cover Chewy. And the first nice. one we'll look at, well, the headline one today, that's Apple. And then yeah. in the third segment, we'll look at Costco today. Tommy? Costco, man, quite a stock. You got some good ones, Kevin. Uh, Chewy, I hadn't looked at this one in a while, man. And this is why, folks, people talk about, you know, uh, they were talking about in our Tiger's Den yesterday, Kevin, that there's a, you know, extreme example that people could be down. If you don't have exposure to the few companies, maybe like Apple, that are just plowing hump higher, I look at Chewy, man, you're up at 120 earlier this year. You just got cut in half down to 60, along with some other big ones as well. But Costco, quite a run, man. This year, you started at under 400. You're pushing 530, let alone you came into 2020 at about 300. Uh, well, Kevin, we look forward to the conversation as always, man. I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. We're going to have a lot more information, and we're going to be coming into a Fed meeting next week already on the heels of that CPI data, man. So I look forward to it.
Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure. You too, Kevin. Have a great show. Have a great weekend. We'll be watching at noon Eastern time today. Folks, tune in every trading day. Uh, there's a lot in flux right now. We got a VIX sitting right at about 20, 2053 to be exact. And uh, this is potentially next week, folks. We'll see what happens. I mean, as in volatility, you saw what just happened basically since Thanksgiving. We're basically sitting at all time highs. We're going to get inflationary data tomorrow. We're going to get a Fed meeting next week and that is the first fed meeting that we're going to have after chairman powell said it's time to retire the word transitory you better believe that fireworks are at least possible folks uh because if he's going to accelerate things he's trying to push that message as kevin said it's quite a balancing act right so maybe that first introduction uh when was it last week now in terms of retiring the word transitory maybe that was the first introduction to uh, Chairman Powell, maybe ratcheting up the timeline of that taper of the rate rises. We'll find out starting next week and we'll get an indication tomorrow with the CPI data. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back for the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. We got the S&P negative by 14 right now. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, barely in the red by about a quarter percent, 16,350. The Dow off about a third of a percent. The Russell leading the way off seven tenths percent right now. We jumped to commodities. You got gold off about $2 right now. We jumped to crude. 
You get the crew contract right now, trading down 61 cents. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Before I get back into the inflation, jump to some of the stocks that are moving this morning. Where are we? There we are. Uh, CVS, so ahead of their investor day, they raised their guidance. Uh, 2022 adjusted profit, 810 to 830 per share. Market was looking for 824, better than expected. Revenue raised the 2021 outlook. They were trading higher pre-market. CVS, there you go, up about 2.3%. I believe they have their investor day going on today for CVS. Hormel, out with their earnings. They beat by a penny. Revenue that also topped forecast. Double-digit growth across all its business segments. They are trading higher. HRL is their symbol. And they were trading higher. They give it back. They're basically flat on their earnings. Restoration Hardware. How about this one? Trading higher in a big way. I talked about this yesterday. I think they had about a $58 move, almost a 10% move priced into the equity. And guess what? They get almost exactly that to the upside, folks. Crazy. You put it up on a daily. Excuse me. There's your daily action. Now, this thing had traded pretty lower. And right just like that, you might get right back into that consolidation area. The consolidation, we're going to add a drawing. Add that box right there. I mean, you could say that consolidation stretching from the better part of April all the way to November. And just like that, you trade up 9.3% on Restoration Hardware. And they beat um, nothing insanely staggering. I mean, they have a decent beat. Maybe the market was a little bit worried about whether they'd be able to live up to the expectations of a stock that's traded so much higher recently. Earnings of 703, 40 cents above estimates. Revenue beat forecast as well. They lifted the low end of their revenue outlook, and the market takes it and runs with it. Now, GameStop, not quite the same scenario. Uh, well, you know what? Before we get there, I'm just going to comment on, on fashion rental company. So Rent the Runway, I'm not familiar at all with this company. Fashion rental, I guess, is what they do. Not quite the chart that you want to take a look at. I guess maybe they just went public in October at 24 bucks, pushed paper out to the public. That's their first earnings. They're down at 10.03. Now, I bring them up. Down 12% of the session because Stitch Fix, man, they are in trouble too. What's crazy is I was looking at Stitch Fix and I think I was going back that I had, believe I had, yeah, I believe I had an earnings trade around March. Um, and what I was doing was I was a little bit bearish and I think I sold a call spread. So I sold a credit call spread above the market of like 75 to 76. It tanked on the earnings and I ended up collecting that small premium. Um, but man, this stock has just been pummeled since then and they're in trouble i mean this one stitch fix we didn't talk about it yesterday um let me see if i can pull it up in time but they really are sinking in terms of what they have going on maybe this is the one now nah, i'll pull it up at the break but in terms of their revenue this year versus the revenue next year they're in big trouble uh when you see the decline all right i'll have to pull it up because they got a bunch of different price downgrades, upgrades for Stitch Fix when this thing tanked yesterday. But it speaks to the same thing. Renting fashion, right? Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix, they, they are very, very expensive. Expensive When you talk about delivery of, of clothing items, uh, we're just seeing the, the fashion arena of, of the high cost renting fashion, you know, delivering high cost apparel and what it is might not be what it's shaping up to be. That is a very competitive space to be and it's very difficult for fashion to be done online you're seeing stitch fix pay the ultimate price here you're getting a bounce but man that is a dead cap bounce in a big way up three percent just see the market cap of this company now about two billion dollars that's a tough one folks you start getting under a billion dollars you know there's a lot of companies out there that are billion dollar companies that aren't even public let alone you just tank from 113 down to 20 dollars over the course of basically less than a year yeah february 113 on that equity all right, I'll pull that up, too, to illustrate on Stitch Fix. GameStop, though, jumping around. They are lower. Uh, they posted decent numbers, but a wider loss compared with a year earlier, disclosed in uh, an August subpoena from the SEC involving the trading of its shares. Yeah, it seems like the SEC should be all over what's going on in some of these meme stocks. GameStop, you're down about 2.7% today. I was uh, listening earlier this morning. They were talking about uh, they made less they stocked up on inventory for the holiday season. That may be some of the action. You tank lower last night. You reclaimed some of those losses this morning, though. Maybe you got the Wall Street bets traders out there might be buying. You're up from 165 to about 170 for GameStop. Let's just jump over to AMC while we're at it. AMC getting a lift of about six tenths percent right now. The market catching the lift. You have the NASDAQ 100 now in the green. S&P is only negative by six. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're bringing that NASDAQ positive. Apple's just not stopping, man. It is remarkable. Uh, I was listening to my dad's show last night, and he said 16.5 million shares, 16.5 billion shares. Yes, 
Apple has 16.5 billion shares. To put that in context, folks, if Apple was trading at a dollar, it would be a $16.5 billion company. If it was trading at $10, it would be a $165 billion company. If it was trading at $100, it would be a $1.65 billion company. But guess what? If it's trading at $183, it's going to be a one. It's going to be a three trillion dollar company. Uh, a remarkable. I mean, and check out the run this thing has had, folks. That's a three year weekly. All right, let's just put it on a daily for a little bit more clarity. We know the run it had in 2020 was amazing, but look at the run it's had just since October. In two months, you've had Apple rise. What is that? Thirty six dollars. Twenty five percent almost for the biggest company in the world over a period of two months. Just be careful, folks, because that is quite an appreciation of market capitalization. Because what did I just say? 16.5 billion shares, 16.5 times, and what did we just get? $36 almost? Yeah, you're talking about $600 billion in market cap. Just in the last two months, $600 billion in market cap has been added to Apple. I don't even know how many companies exist that are $600 billion, but... Apple may deserve it because they got a lot going on. They start pushing out self-driving cars over the next few years, let alone everything else going on. And they win their court case yesterday, at least, where they'll be able to, to delay the changes to their Apple store uh, while it's on appeal, having to do with allowing companies to offer third payment third-party payment processing, as in uh, it all stems with Fortnite. They kicked Fortnite off their Apple store. That had to do with Fortnite trying to steer people to their own website to pay for their products. Apple said that was against their terms. Originally, they lost that deal, uh, allowing third-party payment processes to exist in the Apple store, as in if you're trying to steer people to your own website, as in if TFNN had an app, but we were trying to steer people to TFNN.com to pay for that service, etc. That's what Apple did not like. Now, remember, though, at the time of that ruling, even this loss was not catastrophic to Apple. All right. What they were fighting for there was the ability to be much more than just a third payment party process. They were fighting for to be in the app store without having to give 30%. That was like the holy grail there, that they basically had a monopoly. They were collecting 30% off every transaction in the app store. Uh, it was even the Fortnite CEO at that point said that they were going to appeal the verdict because they were unhappy because they wanted to be in the app store without having to pay that money. And that's what they lost. And the part they won, even that is now up for grabs, as it looks like Apple has at least delayed that while they appeal, and Apple gaining almost a full percent right now. Let's jump to Microsoft real quick. Some of the other FANG stocks up about 2%. You jump to Google shares, down about a tenth of a percent. We jumped to Tesla shares, down 1.5%. S&P is negative by seven. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We'll check out what else we have going on. We'll take a look at some of those inflationary charts I was talking about from that Bloomberg article as well. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in the red right now. S and P is negative by eight. Nasdaq basically flat. You get the Dow off one thirty six right now. Jumping back to the inflation conversation, real quick. Uh, when you jump down to some of the other comments they have going on here, in terms of craziness for the used car market, it'd be amazing to see when this thing reverberates to a normal. This one may take a little bit longer. As chips, one of the big problems in cars. I mean, amazing how much revenue some of these companies have lost. Right, you're talking about what six billion dollars of potential revenue for some of those car companies for the fiscal year. Used car prices, you're talking about 54 percent in April of this year. You're talking about 43 percent coming down the line in November, just staggering prices for used vehicle value index. That's got to reverberate to a more normal, folks. Uh, it's not like used vehicles are going to be an investment that can just flourish like real estate. That's not how it works. Eventually, they reach diminishing values. Uh, you get into it even further when we're talking about this is what I wanted to talk about, the final one. Inflation spread into more areas not linked to the reopening of the economy. So, of course, it made sense, right, when people uh, rental cars just through the roof to go rent a car from Hertz, et cetera, right? Airline travel accelerating because people are opening back up trying to travel for the first time in a couple years. But now it's everywhere, okay? Contribution of non-reopening components to the monthly change in the U.S. CPI. Look at the black and look how it's risen, okay? Early in the year, you had basically a huge chunk of the inflation coming from reopening components you get into april and may now remember folks i think i got my first shot in march for the vaccine april's the first month where you really had people being double vaccinated um, feeling confident to get back out there and live their life post vaccination but things have changed dramatically energy of course is a big one here okay but it's a lot bigger than that folks the non reopening components to the monthly change in cpi is I mean, look at look at the number we're talking about here. You're talking about even a bigger contribution than reopening and energy uh, as it's almost half of that number. I'm struggling to see which one we're dealing with in terms of, you know, a, a total of one percent or how that thing correlates. But that was the one that hit me the most there uh, in terms of non reopening. And that's talking about Fed hikes nonetheless. But keep that one in mind, folks, especially in light of tomorrow. We'll see how that number comes out. Uh, but I talked about ahead of time because, folks, the Fed and inflation is going to drive the action, in my opinion, for the foreseeable future, as it should. Anytime you have the level of stimulus we have going on right now with the, the interest rate where it is and with inflation where it is right now, that conversation is going to drive the market. It has to because if you have the Fed ratcheting up 
how fast they're going to raise rates, that is going to cool the economy. It's going to cool it in a big way when we've been used to 0% interest rates for a long time. Okay, jumping around to other stories, this one really caught my eye. Tesla getting beat in uh, one of the most competitive car markets in the world, Germany. Mercedes-Benz beats Tesla to hands-free driving on the Autobahn. Not sure uh, how Elon would receive the, that news. Seems like he would receive it very poorly, uh, knowing the ego he has. But interesting that they get it done. All the talk is that Tesla's got the AI system, right? They have the data. They have everything. But boy, this would be quite a shakeup if they are not the first ones to really plow forward. Now, I'm going to preface this with the story yesterday talking about Tesla. Now, many states have laws that make it illegal to talk on your phone while you're driving. Well, Tesla just introduced an update, folks, that allows the driver to play games on their central console while they're driving. Makes zero sense whatsoever, and I do not trust, trust Elon Musk to be making decisions regarding safety because he has one goal and one goal alone, folks. He is not being concerned with the details of safety, unfortunately. That's my opinion. But the facts keep lining up. Um, and now you're talking about just the straight out technology might not be the best around. It's interesting when you look at it. So they want regulatory approval to deploy a hands free driving system in Germany ahead of Tesla, gaining an edge in the race to offer high levels of automation in one of the world's most competitive car markets. They got the green light to sell its drive pilot package for use on stretches of the country's Autobahn. Now, here's the key. Only going 37 miles an hour. I didn't realize the Autobahn had stretches that only allowed you to go 37 but i guess there's areas that are a little bit limited as well but nonetheless that is a level three autonomous driving a notch higher than tesla's level two and it allows drivers to take their hands off the wheel in slow moving traffic and they even talk about um for example example to communicate with colleagues via the in-call office to write emails to surf the internet or to relax and watch a film i was like are we here right now it, the things are happening faster than we realize, folks. The level of technology advancement is just tough to comprehend when it's so exponential, but you're seeing it play out in real time now. Mercedes has the ability to offer regulate, uh, and it's completely regulated, okay, approved by regulators, where on streets going 37 miles an hour, you can just tune out and watch a movie. And that's what's happening. Uh, Tesla, Alphabet's Waymo, and others have been chasing self-driving technology for years. Fully autonomous vehicles would be highly attractive to premium customers. I would imagine so. Uh, Mercedes got permission for the system only in Germany, but said it's aiming for the regulatory approval in other jurisdictions as well. Drive Pilot will be an option for the S-Class and EQS models from around the middle of next year. They haven't decided how much they're gonna charge for it. It's pretty amazing, right? You're gonna have car companies now I wonder how this is going to impact the margins, okay? Because this is something that costs zero, zero dollars in terms of a variable cost for how many they sell. Now, I might be ballparking. There's probably some level of cost, I guess, when it comes to adding that system to that car. But all you're doing is uploading a piece of software, but that they already hold. Um, I was surprised by this to see Tesla getting beat out in the German market uh, by one of the most powerful companies out there in the automobile industry, Mercedes-Benz. And Tesla has always been known as kind of the premium product and the one that's on the forefront. If they lose that title, that valuation that they have might make zero sense in terms of $1 trillion. We'll see what happens. But I was surprised by that. They're supposed to be the leader. And uh, self-driving cars, Mercedes getting it done on the Autobahn. All right, what else we got going on? Jumping down to some of the other stocks that I was taking a look at, jumping down the list. Yeah, Yum Grands gets upgraded, upgraded excuse me, to overweight from neutral at Atlantic. Possibility of rising returns from the restaurant chain. Calls Yum its favorite name in the quick service restaurant category. Can't argue with the brands they have in there, man. There is only one Taco Bell and KFC. Yum is flat right now at 131.85. And we jump over to Fubo. Fubo TV and Lyft, but this thing has been punished recently. Yeah, you're up 4.6% today. So they get an overweight from JP Morgan sports centered offerings as a differentiating factor now that one caught my eye which is why i wanted to bring it up okay so that's an attractive thing because sports are uh, you i've seen the ads for fubo tv but here's the thing take a look at the context of this chart yeah watch out folks you're sitting at 20 bucks you're basically chopping around it near the lowest of the year talk about getting out of whack at 62 dollars a couple times but maybe that's where uh you find a bid almost right where you were back in may on fubo excuse me up 4.5 percent so far today all right, with that in mind, we get the markets turning back a little bit 
towards the red side. We got all the markets back in the red. S&Ps were just up to 46.94. We're trading at 46.88. All things considered, though, you back things up just 10 days, folks. For some context, on a 30-minute basis, we're sitting right near all-time highs. Maybe that consolidation area is somewhere between 46.75 and 4,700. Remember, folks, all-time highs, 47.40. We're basically one move away from all-time highs. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by 12 right now. I got a chart of DocuSign up here. They're chatting about DocuSign and the Tiger's Den. Uh, and yeah, you bet they are. Quite the move. Extending. Now, we, we have a far way to go to where we were when they came out with those earnings, Miss, on December 2nd. You're talking about a week ago. You were trading at 235. But just like that, you can see from Monday, you're talking about trading up $28, folks. That is more than a 20% pop. On DocuSign, uh, and maybe that is the low with these types of accelerations you get to the upside. We have a negative market right now, but you get DocuSign up 3.5% right now, uh, continuing to rise from the decimated levels they had from 232, and you back it up even further than that, because we're talking about 275 as recently as November 19th down to 131. You got more than wiped out if you were on margin in these equities, uh, trading now at 160 for DocuSign. Let's bring up Zoom, because Zoom had paid the price dearly as well. Zoom, 
a little bit flat, but Zoom's 20 bucks off at lows, off the lows it had Monday as well. So you're talking about more than a 10% bot pop, but same thing. Zoom's got some way to go here as you are more than 70 bucks off where you were November 16th and putting this on a daily. You're talking about 450 back in February and you were even higher than that. You were at 588 more than a year ago. And uh, yeah, Zoom, I mean, this this might be a low, folks, because I do not see Zoom getting back near 100 bucks. You get back to 100 bucks, I will be buying Zoom for sure, because you're talking about getting back to pre-pandemic levels at $100. It's remarkable you've gotten back to 193, considering we were at 588. Uh, Zoom is a profitable company that is growing, just not to the degree that they thought when they were up at 588 for Zoom shares. All right, watch out for this market, folks. We got a little bit of selling going on right now with the S&Ps down 17 points. You're talking about a good 12 points off of the highs we've been made just about 20 minutes ago. Let's jump over to the VIX volatility index right now. Sitting right near 20 when we started the program, and you're sitting at 2041 right now on that VIX. And we'll jump to notes and bonds to finish it up. You got the 10-year positive by eight ticks, 130.15. And you get the 30 year positive by 18 ticks right now. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next at 10 o'clock. We got our man Larry Pesavento live at 11. We have Fast Market at 12. You heard them. They'll be talking about uh, some equities in particular. Uh, and of course, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien, all this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody.